SJ. Welcome to Muskogee Radio, your weekly source for tribal and community news, interesting guests and discussions, plus a local events calendar. Jay Stone Go, Gary Fife, Jaho Jifkidos, Muskogee Radio, Madbo Hedge Wedges. Welcome to our program here on this rain soaked, uh, oat moldy morning. I um, keep wondering when are the 40 days going to be up and whether we'll end up on Mount Air River after something like that. But uh, I have some wonderful people who came in today. Uh, we have the candidates for our uh, scholarship pageant. Uh, which is taking place tomorrow, I believe. Um, we have uh, Shelby Boto in the coordinator and uh, a couple of the uh, uh, Miss Muskogee candidates joining us today. And then in our second uh, segment on, on, on this program, uh, we'll, we'll be talking to the junior Miss. But uh, first of all, uh, Shelby, uh, why don't you give us kind of a real quick capsule of what the pageant's all about? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Shelby Botone, Royalty Coordinator uh, for the Muskogee Creek Nation. And um, I just wanted to let everyone know, first off, that um, we did change the venue of the pageant to Faith Church, uh, which is located in Glenpool, Oklahoma. Um, they were gracious enough to help us with the, <laughs> you know, uh, the venue change uh, in such a quick, uh, you know, time frame. Um, so we appreciate them for that, and um, it's still starting at 6.30 p.m., uh, and then same date, May 30th, which is tomorrow th on Thursday. Uh, so we try to keep as much the same as possible and just kind of plug in at Faith Church and everything like that, so it's more convenient for everybody, right. um, hopefully. So, But um, I just want to thank them for that. And then, um, but also, uh, I'm glad uh, to, you know, be heading this up this year. Um, as my first year as coordinator, uh, it's a little nerve wracking no, at times, <laughs> especially right now. There's so much to, you know, changes that occurred mm -hmm. within the past uh, week or so, uh, due to the flooding, um, and all of that. So, um, but, uh, we're gracious enough that, um, we're able to do that. And I got a great team at public relations that helps me with everything, you know, and all that stuff. So, um, but as far as the scholarship pageant goes, uh, I was, you know, very honored to be uh, heading up this position uh, just because of uh, what the scholarship means to us, uh, the scholarship pageant. Um, it's just basically given um, a scholarship opportunity to young Muskogee women, um, you know, to encourage them to uh, learn about their culture uh, and also while, uh, you know, strengthening their abilities and helping them uh, achieve their goals, you know, whether uh, towards their academic goals and eventually their careers and uh, to hopefully uh, one day uh, give back to our Muskogee people and everything like that. So it's basically just strengthening up our women and uh, that's what we uh, strive to achieve. Okay, first day. of all, is there an admission charge for this? Uh, no, uh, that's another thing. Uh, it's free admission to the pageant, as always. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, culture, of course, is uh, w one thing we're all concerned about these days, the possible loss. So it's really wonderful to see young people like that embrace it and, and uh, bring uh, that to the forefront, so to speak. So is that really a, a big part of the competition, I guess? Uh, yeah, it sure is. Uh, anywhere from language, you know, uh, musical talent, uh, storytelling, um, we try to include it all, um, dancing, uh, art, um, everything like that, um, just uh, however they would uh, love to express themselves uh, that incorporates the Muskogee culture and history because we're counting on our young people to carry that on to the mm -hmm. next generation. And that's what we just, that's what the scholarship pageant tries to do uh, in their small part is just, you know, try to carry on that to the next generation and encourage that amongst young people. Now, I use the word competition, and so I presume it is, but right. uh, are there different segments that each of your uh, uh, contestants uh, participate in? Uh, different segments? Yeah, like uh, talent, uh, appearance, that sort of thing. 
Okay, uh, there is different um, categories within the competition. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah that yeah. we judge on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they're required to write uh, an essay, an introduction letter. They take a Muskogee knowledge quiz. Um, they also uh, present their traditional dress, um, and they also have their cultural presentation uh, to show, you know, that either it be a song or some art or if they make something um, uh, out of, you know, uh, like a, I don't know, a flute perhaps mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something like that and they can play their flute, their tr you know, traditional music, stuff like that. Um, anything like that, that's, that. I would say that's probably the most that people remember, the most yeah. category, yeah. obviously. Um, but also, people do love to look at the beautiful traditional dresses, which uh, a lot of the contestants do make themselves mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. like that. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. So uh, I presume there's a time limit uh, on, on that sort of thing. So nobody's going to be making a pair of ball sticks or anything. Like that. Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to it. Uh, why don't you introduce uh, the two contestants who joined us here this morning, their categories, and we'll let them speak for themselves. Okay. Um, yeah, we got two of our uh, Miss candidates here with us today. Uh, first one is Michaela Buckley, um, and next one is Savannah Harjo. Um, I'll let them take it from here. <laughs> okay. Hishe, Michaela Buckley, Jahajif Giros. Hishe, Savannah Harjo, Jahajif Giros. Okay, who wants to start? I will. Um, this is my second year running and this is my first time running for Miss. I ran for a Junior Miss last year, and that was my first time running for Junior Miss. And it was a great experience for me because that is totally out of my comfort zone, and I gained confidence by running. And though I didn't win the crown, I did win something in the end. I got out of my comfort zone, and I just, I'm now doing stuff that I would never imagine myself doing. Why is this uh, so important to you? I wanted to show young Native women that they can do it no matter what. And don't let anything hold them back no matter what because they can do it and all Native women are strong. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any uh, special talent uh, set aside that you'll be sharing? I will be singing for my talent. I'll be singing Hayatkin Alajajit. Mm -hmm. For those mus non Muskogee speakers, what's that title? Um, uh, beginning in the morning. Okay. Well, good. It sounds, sounds wonderful. <laughs> the uh, responsibilities you carry, then, if you were. Uh, chosen would be uh, pretty pretty heavy duty I, I would say now do you have any thoughts about how you would represent the Muscogee Nation I will represent very strongly and I will do it to the best of my ability now you'll be called on to travel and make appearances at other uh, other events uh, both primarily native but then some I would presume were non-native uh, how would you uh, present yourself to people of other nations then? I would present myself very strongly and just show them a part of what the Creek culture and what we do. Mm -hmm. I kind of just show them what how we do it. Because mm -hmm. I know other, with other tribes, they do it differently. Right, right. Yeah. Have you thought about um, how culture then would be represented how how would you show other people muskogee culture i would show them through appearance wise by our dresses because i know um all different tribes wear different things mm -hmm. and how would you spread the message so to speak uh, when you're asked to to talk maybe in public uh, what kind of things do you think would be important for other people to, to know about you and and your tribe? I would tell them about you know our my platform, mm -hmm. and I want to get that spread across. And also, I just want to to talk about what the Creek Tribe does. Mm -hmm. What is that platform, by the way? Um, 
sorry, um, Native Amer- or homeless amongst Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Homeless? Yes. Oh boy, that's a that's a major topic. Uh, is there something in particular about that that topic that that you think is most important? Not very people realize it, but I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Native Americans are the top to be homeless. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty rotten category to be the top soon, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay, if you could, if you had like a magic wand and you could change that for these people, what would you want to see happen? I I want them to have a home, of course. Obviously, yeah. And to see them get out by doing a job or at least better themselves, mm-hmm. but also better the tribe. Mm, would you want to see programs set up to help them? Yes, I do. Anything in particular? Um, of course, to give them a house, have a process, mm. but and if they don't have a job, then have programs to help them with that. If there is a final word or message you wanted to leave with our listeners about you, what would it be? Um, that I'm really shy. <laughs> and not outgoing, but if if you would really talk to me, I'm just a very quiet person. I can see. All <laughs> right. We'll let you off the hook here. All right, next, I, our next candidate is... Uh, Savannah Harjo. Okay, Savannah, uh, it's all yours. Um, so my name is Savannah Harjo, and this is my first year running in the pageant for Miss. And it's been a really like exciting process so far and I'm super excited for tomorrow. Um, but it's been kind of a rush trying to get things ready and tr- figuring out what I'm supposed to do. But um, I'm really excited for tomorrow and everything to come. Mm-hmm. Same questions that we put to your partner here. Uh, why is this uh, such an important thing? Um, It's important to me because I take a lot of pride in my culture and Creek Nation, so it's important to me to try to represent and show people how connected and but diverse we can still be. So, yeah. Yeah, what do you do to stay connected? What do you do to stay connected to your culture? Um, I go to stomp dances every year. I go as much as I can with my family, and I try to keep up with everybody that I can as much as possible. Um, My grandma has tried to teach me some language and how to make dresses and stuff, so I try to stay around her and figure out, like, some, like, language and some of just, like, the cultural activities that we do. Yeah, language is quite a challenge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I take classes myself, and I'm a beginner, and I'm still getting beat to death. <laughs> now, why is it so important for the tribe to have a, a position like this, and why would you want to fill it? I think it's important for us to have a position like this because we need people to represent who we really are and what we stand for, and I think we need to have good people that can fulfill that position and um, I would like to do that because I take a lot of pride in it and I just think that we should try to show other nations and other types of people who we really are and I want to be able to do that. Well our, uh, our culture is really so vastly different from other tribes around the country. Now, how would you go about demonstrating that fact? Uh, what would you want other tribes and, and non-Native people to know about the Creek Nation? Um, I'd like them to know like basic history and background and maybe some language, how we speak, um, how we present ourselves with like dresses and stuff, and some of our traditions and just how we do things like culturally. Mm-hmm. I know I've probably kind of asked this already, but uh, you know, many tribes have uh, women in positions similar to this, uh, you know, different cultures and backgrounds and things all around the nation. What is it maybe that uh, 
you think it's really significant to share about Muscogee culture and to teach these other other people? I think that we honor our women and we try our best to build our young women up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important for us to get across to people. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any idea of how that happens? How we honor our women? Um, I know we're very like matriarchal. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And um, I always see that my grandma takes care of everybody and makes sure everybody comes right. first. And you take care of her? Yeah, I try my best. <laughs> okay, well that's great. Now the uh, the challenge, of course, is you know, you know poise and you know, and be able to uh, sound very very uh, let's say correct, but that's not the word I'm looking for. But uh, you know, sound good for other other people when they listen to you. <coughs> Forgive me. There. What is it then that? Uh, uh, you want other people and these judges tomorrow to know about you? Um, I'd like them to know that I'm very shy and, uh, but I think once you get to know me, you'll see that, like, I can, I have a lot to say and I can be very outspoken, but I think I can also be very, like, professional with people yet friendly. And I think that's important with everybody to make sure that you can have some level of professionalism but still be welcoming and friendly. Well, that's quite a challenge there. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Um, we're going to take a short pause here, and then we'll bring in the candidates for Junior Miss, is it? Correct, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, please stay with us here on Muskogee Radio. We'll be right back after a couple of these things. Hear that? That's the sound of hope being killed by meth. Methamphetamine use is causing huge problems in our community. Hear that? That's the sound of something you can do about it. Events like rodeo, res ball, and family time can help keep kids away from meth. Talk to your kids. Keep our culture alive. A message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free America and the National Congress of American Indians. Learn more at ncai.org. Who am I? Am I Indian? Just because I'm a girl from the res, don't make things up about me. What if I move away? Then who am I? Some kids try meth just to escape. But then I think about my grandma, my little brother, my beadwork, my poetry. And I think, I like who I am. And I know, meth is not for me. Check out NCAI.org, a message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free America and the National Congress of American Indians. Welcome back to Muskogee Radio here on uh, 1240 The Brew, 106.3 FM and 1240 AM, and you can find us online at 1240thebrew.com, so hopefully you'll be listening in. We have our second uh, segment here, um, our uh, junior Miss candidates who've come in, and I'm going to let them uh, introduce themselves since I'm so horrible with names, so uh, first of all. His J Stongo, Santilla Jack, Chohojifkados. His J Stongo, Mahaya Ramirez, Chahojifkados. His J Stongo, Jaden Randall, Chahojifkados. Mm, that's a great start. Okay, who's brave enough wants to start first? Lots of smiles looking at each other. <laughs> Nobody stepping forward. All right, we'll start here. Once you, uh, your, let me have your name again and a little bit about you real quick. Hello everyone, my name is Scintilla Jack. I am 16 years old. I'm of the Deer Clan and the Sand Creek Ceremonial Ground. Why is it so important for you to participate in this, uh, this project and be uh, possibly uh, named as, uh, as royalty for the Muskogee Nation? Well, I think, I think it's been... It, go ahead. Um, so I have always wanted to do this since I was younger, and I've always looked up to all of the represent representatives of our tribe. And so I wanted, I always been proud of who I am and of my nation. So I always wanted to represent that. And why do you think it's important for the tribe to have a position like this? Is it uh, uh, obviously carries a lot of responsibility. A lot will be resting on your shoulders as as. Uh, Muskogee woman. Uh, 
Why is it so important? Well, we are like the ambassadors for young Muscogee women, and so we we like show the culture perspective, and we show like we just have to be a role model. So it's important because we show show how much like what is important to our people, like in the cultural way, in the language, and and even in your education in the world. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're uh, well grounded in your culture? Yes, sir. And how so? Well, I participate at the, my ceremonial ground, and I am involved in a in a traditional church. Mm, well, that's a uh, quite a combination there to uh, carry so much uh, responsibility. Now, as an ambassador, you will be the perhaps only person many folks will see and hear and get to know about uh, someone who is a Muscogee. Uh, other tribes, uh, non-native people will be uh, checking checking out your presentation. What will you be sharing? What? How would you represent us? Well, what my platform is is like about cultural, like culture, and how like knowing your culture can benefit your future. And so I, what I would represent is that it's important to know who you are and where you come from so it can guide you in the path of where your future is. Mm -hmm. And where people uh, are, are uh, seeing a lot of other, other native persons at other pageants, powwows, uh, other, other events, how do you think uh, you can make yourself stand out among all those others? Well, um, being friendly to people, being nice to people, just being like a genuine person because that's what they look for and then that's what a lot of, that's what Native people represent is just being good people. So how you make yourself stand out is just probably being outspoken and listening and just having a good heart. Mm -hmm. Now there will be a lot of other uh, young Muscogee women you know, watching your in public. Uh, probably attending the pageant and seeing how you do and then in the future you'll be mixing in with the community what sort of message would you want to send to them about what you're you will be doing there what, what do you want to share I want to share that it's important to know where you come from and just your culture background and to not be ashamed of who you are and to just, I just want to empower people and to not be ashamed of who you are, to be mm -hmm. proud to be Native American. You don't sound like you've ever been ashamed of who you are. No. Never? No. Oh, good. Because well, um, I've always heard stories about, like, how people were ashamed of who they were in the past, but the ones that were proud of who they are are the ones that are still here today. Mm-hmm. If you could, uh, well, let's put it this way, if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and fix all the problems that face our people today, what would you do? I would want to... It's okay, go ahead. I would want to fix or adjust... Um, how well like our language I guess mm, because yeah, yeah. a lot of our language is dying like I know we have programs to help and that's good that they are there for us to learn but our language is still dying so I think it'd be good to have everyone speak it like mm -hmm. they used to yeah yeah well I'm taking classes myself and trying to regain it. all right any last minute thoughts if you wanted to leave an impression with our listeners what would it be well, I just hope that everyone can come out to the pageant and support all the contestants and know that we are all strong Native women and we just want to, no matter what happens, that we all will represent our nation well. Okay, great. All right, we'll let you off the hook here and uh, move on to the next uh, next candidate here. Let me get it. Okay, great. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Mahai Ramirez. I'm part of the Raccoon Clan. Um, 
and this is obviously not my first time running in the pageant <laughs> but overall the experience it helps you grow as a person I'd encourage any young Native American Muscogee woman to just try you know just to get yourself out of your comfort zone because the first year I ran I was very shy and now three years later here I am talking to you guys so. mm, do you an old hand at it now yeah <laughs> all right well it sounds good yeah the same question I've been uh, asking your other colleagues here why is it so important to have this position to represent our tribe well as Muscogee women you know Muscogee women they do a lot through the tribe for our people um you just they we all cook you know we all mm. you just take care of everyone and I think that's what I think I like about our culture is everyone's just there for one another and no one's ashamed you know to help so mm. what sort of uh, talent will you be sharing in, in the pageant this year I'll be I made a flute and so yeah. that'll be demonstrated on the slide while I play a song yeah what song is that um, I forgot the name of it, but if you guys are able to make it out to the pageant, what I want you guys to listen, I just want you guys to close your eyes and just sit back and listen while I'm playing and just think about our people when they walked here. Mm -hmm. Because the song is emotional mm -hmm. and played at a very slow tempo. It can get you into your feelings. Oh yes, yeah, music is quite a, quite a strong yeah. force there. Now you sound like you've got... Uh, a, a good grounding in culture, uh, first of all, is is that true, and how do you like to share it? Well, uh, I participate with the Muscogee Nation Youth Council, and we recently just got back from our homelands trip, so we traveled all the way to Alabama and Georgia, and I think my favorite part was when we went to Horseshoe Bend, mm, gosh. and that was very emotional and mm -hmm. just seeing it and knowing that our people were there and knowing how many of our native people died there mm -hmm. and knowing that like my tribal town was just right across the river right there oh my. and so that was a very emotional thing and we went to Moundsville and the, we seen the Oatmulgee Mounds and knowing that our people built that and it's still standing today that just makes me feel so good you know mm -hmm. Let me ask you a, a real quick question about Horseshoe Bend. Now, um, I've talked to uh, many people who who have gone down there. They were there during the commemoration a couple of years ago, um, and our reporters, and they said they came away with a very strong spiritual feeling mm -hmm. and uh, contact, perhaps uh, mm -hmm. seeing things they couldn't maybe under uh, explain. Uh, did you feel like that? Did you share that uh, when you were there? Yeah, I actually, at Horseshoe Bend, I really got really emotional. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that, you know, someone that I could have been related to a long time ago, like way back then, was there and that they maybe died there or that, like, my family was over there. Like, our ancestors were over there. They were there seeing all that bloodshed. And, mm -hmm. It really gets to you, but when you come back, you're just so thankful. You're like, wow, like my family made it here. Yes. You know, we're still strong. We're still here. The uh, position that uh, you're um, competing for it will carry some very heavy responsibilities. Uh, you may be the only Muscogee person some of these folks ever meet or ever see or come in contact with. Uh, what is the... Uh, image, perhaps the feeling that you want to share with those folks who are meeting a Muscogee for the first time? I, w I want to let them know that we're still here, you know, because some people think that Muscogee people are just non-existent. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're non-existent, we just moved, we traveled, and overall I just think that's just an amazing thing because it's, we're not gone, you know, we're still here might not be full blood, it might be half or less, but we're still here, we're still Muscogee. Nothing's gonna ever change that. And so I just want them to know that we're strong, kind, spirited people. Okay, um, is there a last minute thought you wanna leave with our listeners about you? Um, I just hope that you guys can all just come out and support everyone as we all compete for this title. Okay, wonderful, thank you, good job. 
All right, let me get this sucker running up again. And finally, our final contestant, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Jaden Randall. I'm 15 years old. I go to Glimple High School, and I'm of the Bear Clan, and Arbica is my ceremonial ground. Okay. Uh, why is this uh, so important, uh, That first of all, that the tribe have this position, and uh, perhaps why you're your candidate? I think it's really important that this position is uh, made and fulfilled because it is a great honor, but it's also a great responsibility. We are representing our tribe. People look up to us. We are ambassadors, and we need to show them what we really are and who we really are and what we really stand for. And I chose to run because I really wanted to step out of my comfort zone and um, just be more involved. I feel like I am pretty involved already, but I really wanted to be able to represent and show people what true Muskogee women are. When you uh, perhaps get this opportunity, what, what is it that you'll be sharing? Um, uh, kindness. Well, let me put it another way. Uh, there are many of our traditions that are still around. Uh, yeah. Are you well grounded there? Yes. How so? Um, I do attend ceremonial grounds whenever I'm able to, but I am also really involved with the Muskogee Nation Youth Council. I'm also a secretary there, and I also, I feel like I know a lot of the language. I take classes at my school, and I've actually completed classes already there, so. Mm, well done. You're probably much better at it than I am. <laughs> I'm still fumbling. What is important that the rest of the world, I guess, uh, know about Muskogee people? Like Mahaya said, that we're still here and we're still around and um, that people don't get the wrong impression of us. Um, that we just remain strong and show people who we are. Do you have something in mind how you will demonstrate that? Not necessarily, but I just, you know, showing people that we're kind and that uh, just being a well-grounded person mm -hmm. and um, just being outspoken. Oh, I don't know. I think a young person who can speak their own, her own language would be quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, I presume that's something that you would want to share? Yes. Okay, great. Now, the um, position has a lot of responsibility, uh, kind of heavy on your shoulders and things like that. How do you plan to take those on? Uh, just going in there with a good mind, showing that, you know, just remaining calm and kind to people and just trying to be a good role model to people. Mm -hmm. The uh, position has a uh, let's call it a talent competition. Yeah. Uh, what do you plan to share? Uh, I will be singing my favorite hymn, Hatayatkin Ale Jijit. Okay, for those who don't speak Muskogee, what does that mean? It's just saying that every morning you wake up and you pray. I saw a smile come across your face there. I presume that is something yeah. you enjoy doing? Yes. If there was something uh, that uh, you could teach people or show people or demonstrate about our people and our culture, uh, what would it be? speaking the language mm. because you know it is dying and we don't have very many if any fluent speakers left not really sure but you know we need to keep it going and keep it alive mm -hmm. the uh, world will be looking at you as uh, perhaps the only Muskogee person they ever meet or hear or get to see uh, what kind of impression do you want to leave with them a good one. I really, <laughs> you know, I just want to show them kindness again and, you know, just be a genuine person with them and show them who I am and what I represent and what I stand for. Okay. Now, the uh, last few seconds here we have, um, if you had a, a final message or so to, to share with our listeners uh, about yourself, what would it be? Um... about myself mm -hmm. or uh, uh, the pageant <laughs> or whatever else I just hope that you guys can all make it out to the pageant and watch us all we've all worked really hard for this and we are looking forward to it 
and um, it would be a great experience to watch. Okay. Well, we'll let you off the hook. We want to thank you all for uh, taking time to come down and swim down here today. Uh, it was <laughs> wonderful. We appreciate you all and wish you all good luck, and uh, perhaps we'll uh, get to see how, how you turn out. All right. Well, we hope to see more of you accomplishing things for the Muskogee people. You're, all the contestants here are just wonderful, wonderful young women, and we'd be proud to have you all there. So, okay, you're, uh, you're free, you're clear, you can take off. We'll be taking another short pause here, and we'll get a wrap-up on this, and uh, then we'll be speaking with uh, uh, Christy Connor about the senior game. So please stay with us here on Muskogee Radio. Hear that? That's the sound of hope being killed by meth. Methamphetamine use is causing huge problems in our community. Hear that? That's the sound of something you can do about it. Events like rodeo, res ball, and family time can help keep kids away from meth. Talk to your kids. Keep our culture alive. A message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free America and the National Congress of American Indians. Learn more at ncai.org. Who am I? Am I native? I don't want people assuming things because I'm Indian. I just want to be me. But how do I live in two worlds? Some guys just check out by doing meth. But that ain't for me. Because I see my family, my friends, my drum making, my future. There are a lot of cool things about being who I am. And meth isn't one of them. Learn more at NCAI.org. A message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free America and the National Congress of American Indians. Welcome back to Muskogee Radio here on The Brew. Uh, joining us now is Christy Connors. Uh, she is with the whoops, Senior Services Program here from Muskogee Creek Nation. Good morning. Thank you for swimming in today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, the uh, event that uh, we're going to discuss here is something I kind of thought about a few times. Uh, I presume I'm old enough to qualify as a senior, but I've seen some of those Folks who participate and makes me want to say no thanks. I couldn't keep up with them. Uh, the senior games. Uh, what are they? Where are they? When are they? Okay, this year it's going to be May 31st, and it's at the Omniplex, um, the Cod Clocks Omniplex, um, under the pavilion, and then just outdoors right there. Um, it starts registration starts at 8:30, and it usually ends around 3:30 that afternoon. Okay. Also uh, joining us in the studio is Angela Ellis. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate Thanks for having me. No, I have some things like the images that pop in my mind when I think of the senior games. Like I'm seeing like the Olympic rings and elders out there. Like, so can you give us like the the atmosphere and tell us what all it really encompasses? What all are what all are our seniors competing in? Okay, we have um, several different games that they compete in every year. We have the horseshoe contest, uh, free throw contest, softball throw jacks and being bag toss i bet that horseshoe contest is pretty steep because like you do not want to get into it with my uncles and some horseshoe they will <laughs> oh I, i've seen it during the festival muskogee people and horseshoes you if you're not one you're like just forget about it <laughs> well, the last one i saw is the first one to miss a ring or loses and oh wow bang 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 just bang. get rid of the like small timers really quick and go yes. for the gusto you know yes, like. forget it. yeah i wouldn't want to put any money on those guys now this is uh, uh always a popular segment of uh of the festival this time of year uh what it, i guess what's the uh reasoning behind it why did all the effort to put them on and feature our senior folks basically just to keep them active um they love competing, obviously. Um, they're very, very competitive. I've had, I've had several of them call me or stop by my office, tell me how they're practicing, you know, already. Um, and then also just the camaraderie, just to, for everyone to get together. They just like visiting with each other and, and coming together um, like once a year and doing this. They, they just have a we good were, time. We were talking about the senior games a little bit at the office, and we were thinking about, you know, for our seniors, a lot of them, and we're thinking about like our family members who have gotten a little bit older, but we're thinking of them in our minds. You know, we know their their glory stories from their days of, as athletes, and we are kind of hard pressed to name a you know a favorite uncle or grandpa who didn't compete at something. So, do you find that you have really good turnout for those kind of comp competitive kind of activities? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, 
Our average um, every year, we have in between 125 and 150 Creek elders attend, and um, the majority of them do compete. There are a few that just like to sit around and visit, um, but the most most of them compete, and um, they are looking for one of those medals at the end of the day. So, so they're going for the gold. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I get this strange question popping popping into my head, wondering. Uh, what does a, a knockdown drag out game of jacks look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, our um, actually the diabetes program is the one in charge of of the game, so they have it all lined up, and and sometimes um, they do get kind of loud with each other, and they have to calm them down, and <laughs> but it's all in fun, and they have a good time. So, no. so what is the, what do you think the most popular? category of competition is what do you see you have the most participants probably in? the free throw contest i think we have the most sign up for that so. no slam dunk no they might try in their spare time while they're warming up but <laughs> no, yeah. I, w I would show up and try like but i'm like not quite a senior and i'm also afraid that some of them would probably put me to shame i'd be like underhanding it like from the <laughs> knees up and mm. and then there'd be somebody come along who'd just like totally like take me to school on it so oh yeah 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 i uh, have never been a basketball person never in my life i'm not very coordinated <laughs> well it wasn't that it was like you know when i had the chance i uh, got on the wrestling team instead we used to beat up on the basketball guys just for fun oh yeah but uh you know i've seen some pretty amazing people out there uh taking part in these games um i presume there's something else kind of uh inner spirit kind of thing you might want to connect with uh, having them come out and you know, take part have fun etc etc what do you think is that the most important in, in that in that category in that vein so I think I think just them coming together seeing people that they don't see on a regular basis um, they just they just have a lot of fun um, interacting with each other and and being with their people, you know, and and everyone everyone just has a good time and gets along great and we eat a lot of food and we do a lot of activities and and they just all have a good time. Um, you know, just coming together and as a group, you know, as as the elders of Creek Nation and So what's the coordinating this effort look like? I mean, like I'm kind of imagining like there's like a hundred, you know, fifty participants and in these categories, what do you guys have to like really, what's it sitting down and putting the plans in order like kind of look like? Well, I mean, this is, this will be our eighth annual one, um, my seventh one that I've coordinated. So um, every year we, um, well, every month we have an elders meeting. And so during the, you know, upcoming months to the event, we start asking them, um, what did you like about last year? Do you want to change anything? You know, um, and we just get their input. They pretty much tell us what color shirts they want, you know, what games they want to play. Um, it's really up to them, and we let them um, basically throw it, throw out their ideas, and that's what we go with. So it's kind of that empowerment element, like plan your party. And, yes. And, yeah. and you guys kind of make it happen. You guys, is it all staff members working the event? Is it? Do you need volunteers? Um, we like I said we um, collaborate with the diabetes program mm -hmm. and then also the youth services always helps us during all of our events and I think they have about 12 or 13 youth um, coming out to help us and so it's basically our three departments that mm -hmm. that all of them um, that come out and put it on so so what's like that the the average day look like when you guys start competition what times it start and uh, what kind what's your agenda looking like well registration starts at 8 30 so that means the elders will show up around 7 30. no <laughs> they're early like yes. they're not they're not millennials or right. anything like that they're going to be there and be they're ready. there waiting on us when we pull up and no yeah. ending time no <laughs> they're ready <laughs> but it's at registration welcoming and breakfast um is from 8 30 to 9 30 and then after that we do a one mile fitness walk um, that lasts about 30 minutes, and then after that's over, we get into um, the different games. We do break for lunch, and then finish the games, and then we'll do the um, awards presentation around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So wrap it up by around around 3.30 or yeah. so. Yeah. Why is it so important for the tribe to expend all this time and energy and resource in, into putting these going? 
Well, because the elders are, to me, you know, the most important people of Creek Nation, and um, that's what our department is, is, you know, here to to um, service our elders, and um, we just like having these different events throughout the year for them. Um, we just want to make them happy and do what they want us to do, and, and they seem to enjoy this. When so. you think about the social network and the, the activity, the physical activity, um, what what is it that an elder person really gains from that as far as overall health-wise and things like that? What's the What's the thought behind this kind of an event? Just to stay active. Um, all of our um, food that we'll have out there is um, geared towards healthy eating um, and then you know the different activities just just to try to get them to stay active and and stay healthy and and so they can stay around for a while you know like, do you hmm. find that these like opportunities kind of combat like some of the like isolation or loneliness that that you know can come with aging um, especially if you've you know been a person whose network you know like you get to a certain age and you see your friends pass on so is this like an opportunity to kind of reconnect and kind of keep each other going kind of thing? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, we um, have a lot of people come out that we don't see all year long, but um, this event just draws them out, and, and you'll see them making friends, talking to people that they didn't know, and and hopefully, um, you know, they'll have a good time and, and get them out of their shell, get them out of the house, you know and come enjoy the sunshine hopefully the sun shining well, hopefully we we'll get some good yes. weather for you guys too <laughs> yes. yeah we'll help hope the storms to keep moving north yeah definitely the um, games that you select to uh, offer are they kind of geared toward uh, age and physical abilities i mean obviously no one's playing football or soccer right. but, uh you know horseshoes and jacks i guess mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then we also have it um, split up into age groups mm. and then also between men and women. So we have um, ages 55 to 65 men are competing against each other and then the, that age group of women and then 66 and over men are competing and then 66 and over women are competing. So so I'm, like, I'm curious about like what the ladies like find most like appealing in competition. It's yeah, I think that some of the some of our elders are going to be from a time when, like, say, women's basketball or softball maybe wasn't as popular. Like, what do the ladies, you know, the elder ladies really get into the most? Um, I think the same. They really like the free throw contest um, for some And I think a lot of them did play mm -hmm. um, back um, when they were in high school. And, and so I think it just brings back memories and and um so i'm gonna like tell my age a little bit but i actually probably played the same format of basketball as some of the elder ladies did three on three half court kind of you know type basketball and mm -hmm. like i think it was like during my time in school when they switched to that five on five full court thing so i'm like wow i'm in that category now <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, getting little glimpses of watching today's varsity teams going at it you're thinking holy cow these mm -hmm. girls are good mm -hmm. uh, the uh, um, uh, numbers there now, now i think you mentioned them before but i want to go back to it um what kind of numbers and there is there a particular uh, category or age group that shows up uh, more than others I really think it's about equal. I mean, there, we have all ages from 55 to, I think we'll have, you know, some that are in their 80s there competing. Um, so it's a pretty equal, you know, um, s split on the age group. Um, we do have more women than we do men, but um, there is, you know, quite a few men that show up also. Uh, the uh, men, are they in particularly uh, involved in any sport more than others no I don't um you know a lot of them we probably jacks is probably the fewest um that we have played with the men um but the horseshoes the free throw contest and softball throw is probably the most popular mm. for the men I'm fascinated by this jacks competition well you'll have to come out it's almost well. <laughs> I, I always picture like the movies like where they're sitting around rolling dice so I'm seeing the jacks like this and mm -hmm. somebody on a crate and maybe you know like throw down the, the dollars and I bet I can beat you Gary. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. 
sound like a feature for the newspaper. <laughs> my grandma taught Muskogee me taught me Jack, so I'm like I'm like this is this is something I want to like get some eyes on and see. <laughs> well, pursuing this silly question even further, um, <laughs> the uh, who who wins in, in a Jack's competition? Like, what determines the winner? Um. <sighs> You know, I don't even know if I know the rules of Jacks, but like I think the first round, you know, they'll pick up one. The second round, mm -hmm. they'll pick up two, and then you know, if you don't get your amount that you're supposed to pick up, I guess that's when you're out. So, it depends on how far they can go if they can pick up all the jacks that are laying there, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe even have like a you does know, anybody runoff. Get, <laughs> does anybody ever get kind of bent out of shape about any of these sports in the competition? No, I mean, they're competitive, and they might start giving each other a hard time, but it's it's all in fun. Um, mm -hmm. We yeah. haven't had any fist fights or have to call light force <laughs> or anything like that yet. <laughs> uh, kind of venturing a little further, uh, is there like medical support there just in case someone has an incident? Perhaps? We do have um, some nurses there. We also have um, like vendors set up and we have our um, public health nurse that's there um, that's available. And then, of course, light horse, um, you know, we can call them anytime we need them and they're right there. Um, so we have... Um, golf carts where our volunteers will um, take them to the different events if they can't walk or up to the restrooms and stuff. We have plenty of water and they can sit under the pavilion, you know, where it's cooler. So, mm -hmm. so Light Horse has never been called in to break up anything? No. <laughs> we have a really fearsome Jack's battle here. Right. We? I would love to hear the smack talk, though. Like, you know, because like, I think that's like the, the good natured, you know, mm. ribbing each other kind of. I bet there's some good stuff going on. Oh, yeah. There's, on. They, they definitely talk smack to each other. Uh, the uh, uh, requirements, eligibility, uh, what's involved in that? Just enrolled Creek citizen, 55 years old or older. And, and the age group breakdown? Yes. It's 55 to 65, and then 66 and older. Oh, my gosh. Looks like I, I fit into the older group. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't compete in jacks. <laughs> no. Well, maybe they'd set up a special one. Yeah, we'll just have like an exhibition jacks competition. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one kind, yeah. of, kind of <laughs> WWW. <-W> <laughs> Lots uh, of high before the thing. <laughs> Bounce the ball like a butterfly. Yeah, Steam like yeah. a bee kind of thing. <laughs> have a cage match or something <laughs> like that. The the kind of things that uh, you're doing, are, uh, I think, are wonderful for reminding these elders how important they are to us. Uh, do you get some feedback from them? Uh, uh, what what do they tell you about having this competition around? Oh, they love it. I think, um, you know, we hold different events throughout the year, and I do think this is their favorite one. Um, you know, it's summertime. They're getting outside. They're, and it's just a nice, relaxing day. And and I've never heard any complaints and everyone comes back and then we it keeps growing every year we just get more and more so I'm sure the word of mouth is you know is helping and and they bring their friends they'll bring their mom you know um, so they'll bring that friend that they used to like play basketball against and be like so I'm gonna get you now on the free show competition <laughs> kind of thing yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, grudges get settled perhaps right. <laughs> Okay, the uh, the way this is, has gone about, I think, is is, is shown uh, other other Muskogee people uh, and festival goers that this they're really important to us. They they're the treasury of knowledge and experience. Uh, they're the teachers and uh, uh, guidance counselors, so to speak. Uh, do the uh, audiences, the spectators, kind of react to that? Does uh, someone bring perhaps a real group of supporters or anything like that? Uh, no, they usually just, you know, the group of elders just come. Um, a lot of communities will bring their vans down, you know, so mm -hmm. they'll load up, you know, anyone that wants to come. And then the, some people that are in the area just drive over, but it, it's really just all elders out there, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Is there a sports dynasty there, one particular town or family or somebody who's the one to beat. You're trying to get me in trouble, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, just so just so I could blame it on you. Right. 
<laughs> um, probably, I'm sure the most turnout we have is, um, you know, the Alt Mogi citizens, mm -hmm. you know, because it is the closest. Um, but we have um, elders from all over the Creek Nation boundaries. We even have um, Oklahoma City always brings a group Ooh. down. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's, so that's great. So it's like even outside of jurisdiction yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there, is there like a rating champion? Like, does anybody like stand out in your mind? Like, who has been sweeping a couple games for, you know, a little while now? There's several that always come away with several um, different medals around their necks. Um, Don Tiger from Tulsa always has a few. Um, Lou Crowfoot from here in Altmogi always seems like she has some around her neck. Um, it's just a variety of people, you know. I mean, they could they could win first place in three different events, you know. Um, you can definitely tell the more um, competitive ones and and the ones that are really trying. And then there's others that are just out there to have a good time, you know. So you do have Jim Thorpe's of the senior games. Yes. <laughs> okay, you got to, Angel, you got to say what I couldn't get. Her to I know. Stick your neck out. Let's go with that question me. a little bit differently and see what we get here. <laughs> okay, well, we need to wrap this up, so let's go over the logistics once more. Uh, when, where, why, who? It's our eighth annual um, senior games on May 31st at the Claude Cox Omniplex. Um, registration starts at 830. This is for Enrolled Creek citizens 55 years old and older. Okay. Christy, if someone wanted to get more information or even participate, how do they go about that? They can call me. Um, my office number is 918-732-7765. And then there's no pre-registration, so if they just want to show up at 830, just come on out. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Thank you, Christy Carson, for for coming down and sharing this uh, information and looks like a pretty fun time. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, we hope you get to swim home, I think, <laughs> uh, safely. <laughs> okay, Angel, uh, we need to get to some community announcements here. Um, you want to go first? Or All right. I? <clears throat> I've got the ninth annual Muskogee Creek Nation 2019 football camp. Uh, Spirit of Oklahoma, open to all ages, all students, grades 1 through 12. They can learn some football fundamentals to improve and develop physical skills for the game, learn the four principles of leadership, discipline, respect, trust, and hard work. It's free to Muskogee Creek citizens, $5 for non-Muskogee Creek citizens. Registration is required on site, available at 8 a.m. The camp the dates and locations, you're going to want to listen closely. It's going to be June 7th at Coweta High School, June 8th at Alice Robertson Junior High in Muskogee, June 13th, Eufaula High School in Eufaula, Oklahoma. June 14th, Okima High School. June 15th, Bristow High School. And if you have any questions and you need some more information, you can get a hold of them by going to mcn-nsn.gov and look up the Muskogee Creek Nation 9th Annual Muskogee Creek Football Camp. Free vegetable and flower seeds. Now, there's no date on this, so I don't know when it might cut off, or I would presume it would end when they run out of seeds. But free vegetable and flower seeds at the MCN Conservation District Housing Building number 220. So if you want to sample your soil to determine nutrients needed and apply fertilizer, they can help you there. Examine your garden to keep ahead of potential problems like flooding you think so yeah. uh, and harvesting veg vegetables so if you're interested in possible seeds or information please get a hold of them that's the Muskogee Creek Nation Natural Resource Conservation District 918-549-2609 the Muskogee Creek Nation Light Horse Police Department's having their summer safety camp June 4th through 6th it's going to take place from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily MCN Light Horse Tribal Police Department is located at 2200 Alligator Trail in Mulgee, and it's for ages 13 to 15. Topics included are drug awareness, first aid, aid, and cultural awareness. They're only accepting the first 20 boys and first 20 girls, so they do have a limit of space, so you want to get a hold of them as fast as you can. They're accepting applications now. If you would like an application, call 918 732-7813 or email Melissa Beaver at mvbeaver at mcn-nsn.gov. All right. The uh, Office of the Principal Chief has issued a national 
um, emergency declaration affecting the entire Muscogee Creek Nation. So uh, just use your common sense. Uh, please be careful. Plan ahead. And as everyone has been saying, uh, uh, don't drown, turn around. And I understand there are a number of uh, uh, areas within our nation that are extremely flooded and, and cut yeah. off. Yeah, they, the executive order issued by the chief um, has really just been encouraging people to obey all the traffic signs. Don't ever cross those flood warnings and things like that. It's come, I mean, all this water that's being released from Keystone's coming all the way to Mulgee, so. All right, thank you for listening to Muskogee Radio today. We hope you will join us again next week. But, oh, Marblehead, it's good. You've been listening to Muskogee Radio. Join us again next week for more local, tribal, and community news and updates. Middle.